Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We are gonna be discussing my very favorite things over the past month and then the things that were not favorites that totally did not work out. So this is faves and hates of August. So the first thing that is an unfavorite is my hairdo right now. Now I have to tell you guys, I've been reading the comments and a lot of you are like, Tati, don't make fun of yourself ever. It's so rude when you make fun of yourself. I'm sorry, that's just my personality. I love self-deprecating humor and I don't actually hate myself or the way I look, but you know, I also don't think I'm God's gift and like look by a mirror and I'm like, oh yeah, fabulous. You know, like I can see when I'm having a good day and bad day, this hair day is not a good hair day. It's not a favorite. It's called, I spent way too much time on my makeup, which was fun. And then I was like, screw the rest of this. I don't think this is gonna come as a surprise to any of you guys. The YSL All Hours Foundation, this stuff is so good. It is so long wearing and I am absolutely a fan of a product that does not make me touch up with a blotting sheet or a powder or anything like that. It just kind of glues to your face. Now here's the thing, I have been wearing this almost every single day for several weeks now. Normally with heavier full coverage long wear, foundations, if you wear them consecutively too long, you will get clogged pores. It's just a heavier product. And I haven't had that issue, fingers crossed. It stays, you know, working well for me. And it'll just continue being a staple in my foundation collection because this stuff is so good. I did an OMG on the Dermacol Full Cover Foundation. Now I put it all over my face. I wore it all day. It does cover like crazy. It really, really does, but it creases quite a bit and it just looked really, really heavy. So I kept it because I liked it, but it really wasn't an everyday makeup that I wanted to reach for. So long story short, what I have been doing recently is taking my glass palette. This is my Scott Barnes glass palette that I use every single day. I take my foundation on here and then I take the tiniest little bit of this product and I take my beauty blender and I just stamp it on the glass and then on any area where I have heavier pigmentation or my little sunspot up here. I have a little scar on my nose, which this is fantastic to put on your nose. If you know you're gonna be contouring your nose, it just kind of covers everything up and it does not move. And there's no creases for it to have the crease problem. So it works really well on the nose. So I'll just kind of hit those key areas and it lays on top of other foundations so perfectly that your whole face looks totally flawless, but you're not covering everything up hardcore, you're just covering certain spots, so you also kind of pull off a little bit of a natural look as well. You don't have to put this on top of full coverage. You could put it on top of other products. It just works really, really well with everything. You need the tiniest amount and it's freaking awesome. I have a new makeup, not setting mist, but makeup mist hydrating mist, whatever you wanna call this. This guy right here from Pixi is magic. This is the Hydrating Milky Mist and this has hyaluronic acid and black oat. I'm gonna just spritz some on right now because it is so nice. The mister on here is like heavenly. It's really, really good. Oh my gosh all day, every day. You can use this underneath your makeup, on top of your makeup, on top of moisturizer throughout the day as a pick-me-up. It's such a nice facial mist. It's not terribly expensive. You can pick this up at Target and I really love it. Speaking of dehydrated skin, because my skin has kind of been on a roller coaster having been out in the sun when I was on vacation and it's just kind of, I don't know, been a little bit weird where my skin is oily, but a little bit dehydrated and kind of all over the place. And the thing that has healed it the most is something that I'm almost afraid to share with you guys because it's so expensive. But I hope you know, I talk about things from Target, the drugstore and, Neiman's, Saks. I mean, like we go full just everywhere. Good products are good products on my channel. It's totally high low. This duo right here is very, very ridiculous, but I am a sucker for skincare and this has made a big difference in my skin and I try so much stuff. So this is the Black Rose Skin Infusion Cream. This is plumping and for radiance and this is made in France. 
It smells beautiful. I've used a lot of it, even though I use it very, very sparingly. I still have gone through quite a bit. I bought this when Jeffrey and I filmed the Get Ready on my jet. We went in the Sisley store and he was raving about this and he has fantastic skin. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll try it. But I kind of in the back of my head was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I have La Mer, I have Paracone products. I have all of my like top shelf, very she-she expensive products from La Prairie from La Mer. I mean, I've tried it all. So when I see another moisturizer, I'm kind of like, oh, okay, sure, yeah, that'll work. But this one is so nice. I actually see a visible difference. This one right here, the Black Rose Cream Mask, this will immediately plump up your skin, take away some of that crepiness, just smooth things out. And I love, love, love this. This one, it says you can put on for 10 to 15 minutes, but I mean, I like to slather it on and just keep it on until it completely sinks in. I also love using my Nurse Jamie Accelerator when I am using either of these products because they're so expensive and I love to push ingredients deeper into the skin. I favorited that in not last month's favorites, but the favorite before that, but I use that tool every freaking day of my life. I also, of course, use this one. Kind of the same thing. We'll just kind of press things in a little bit better and I'm a believer in good skincare. This is a sheer powder brush. This is from Smashbox. You guys know I did the whole rundown on this brush collection, and this has become one of my everyday must-haves. I want another one because I use this for so much. So when I'm bronzing, I will just swirl, tap off the excess, and it just has such a weird shape to it, but it never leaves any streaks on the face. It's the craziest thing. I've been doing makeup for a long time, and this brush, it almost feels scary to use because it's kind of fluffing around everywhere, but my God, it just gives you the perfect application every single time. And then another brush that I'm obsessed with is the mini version of this guy, and this is the Buildable Cheek. Now this one, same thing, it looks kind of scary, but when you go and put your blush on, it just airbrushes it to perfection. These brushes are so, so good. And I'm not being paid to say that. I just, I've continued using these so much over and over and over. This one right here is the Precise Blush, but I actually like going underneath the eye with it. So I kind of use my brushes however I want to use them. I think it's helpful that they say what they do, but kind of like use your brushes how you want. But these are the three that I'm just like, oh, Let's talk about a face product that just did not work out for me. This powder, I was like, oh, this is cute. This is kind of like a drugstore-esque type of an affordable powder. This is the Mineral Neutralizing Mattifier. Now this is from Pacifica. It's pretty. It kind of captured my attention. I was at Ulta and I was like, oh, that's so cute. Maybe this will work. Like I do not judge a price tag. Like I love my Rimmel Stay Matte. That's around five bucks. Sometimes for an on the go mattifying powder, you know, you don't have to pay a lot of money, but this one, oh my God, for whatever reason, it would just make me look so chalky and exaggerate any dryness. And it would just build and build and build. Even if I put a setting spray on top of it, I'd look in the mirror and I'm like, dang, I went from having a good makeup day to looking like total and complete cake face. So I'm not into this. Have any of you guys tried this? It's the weirdest thing. Am I losing my mind? Let me know. Are there other Pacifica products that I should try out? I'll leave that in the comments below. I need to know because this one, oh my God, was so bad. All right, another product that wasn't bad, but I just want to give you guys an update on this. I feel torn, actually. I kind of feel like when you date a guy and like you like them and you like want there to be something there, but like deep in your gut, you're like, ugh, I just know you're gonna sit in my shelf and I'm gonna ignore you. I'm not gonna be interested. I might look at you and pretend I'm interested because you're cute, you're gold, you're pretty, um, but this is just gonna roll around in a drawer for a year, so I may as well give this to someone who can appreciate it more than me. I just keep going back to the primers that really work for my skin, and I used this about three days in a row, and then I was like, I miss my other primers, so I moved on. This is the YSL Touche Clot Blur Primer. Now, it's not bad, 
It's just not fantastic. That's the update. Go get a sample at the counter if you're really, really curious about this. You know, the foundation is A plus fantastic. This was just a little too oily and did not fill in my pores the way that I want them filled in. Cause I want to look like a mannequin. Hey, I have another primer that I don't like. Let's just beat up a bunch of primers. This one, I really wanted to work. I have heard a lot of people speak really highly about this. This is the J1 Jelly Pack Dramatically Firming Skin with Improved Elasticity and Pore Smoothing. A lot of people compare this to the Sicily Double Tensor because of that stickiness. I don't think they compare at all. I just didn't have a good skin day when I wore this. It didn't do really much for the longevity of my product and it was sticky, but it kind of made things blend a little bit weird. So I was a little bit let down. I don't know if I'm being a harsh judge. I'm really weird with primers, <laughs> obviously. So you guys figure it out. If you want with primers, always go and get a sample. But if you are looking for something that is poor smoothing, this is not it. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I guess I'll just give it to a friend. It's a big bottle. You get a lot. Let's talk about a dupe that is just like blowing my mind right now. So I did my little cute snap tutorial and with like the big blue under the eye thing that I was just, I don't know what, inspired that. I used the Silk Kissimmee liner in True Teal for my little snap tutorial and I was wearing this look in my glow in the dark video if you want to take a peek at it. I just smeared this all underneath my lower lash line, took a brush, smeared it out and set it with a similar colored eyeshadow. Now what I was noticing is that this guy from Marc Jacobs right here, this is the shade Odyssey. They're pretty much the same. So we have a beautiful dupe and the formula on this is actually a little bit more blendy and you can put it in the waterline. These are so, so great and affordable from L'Oreal. I've talked about them over and over and over, but I just wanted to kind of give a little love to this shade right here that I have been reaching for a lot. Super flattering, really bright, and it wears all day long. Like in my glow in the dark video, you see me in the morning putting that highlight on, but you also see me at nine o'clock at night and that under eye area, I did not touch up once and it is still so bright. I will link that video below. And then for lips, you guys, I am kind of having a thing with H&M lipstick again. This is just so good. All of these neutral shades, I really am obsessed. Now this shade right here, Peach Fuzz, is a favorite. The shade Cream Chestnut, also a favorite, but the one that I am like, I need this in my purse, I need this on the go, I wanna use this every day, it's like this magical, beautiful nude, is the shade Seashell. Look at that, oh my God. This is so pretty. I'm gonna put on a little bit right now, even though I'm wearing like five other things, but let's just do it. The formula on these does not settle into your lines. It really makes your mouth look so smooth and plump. And these are so just like, ah, oh, I can't believe the price of them. I love these. I'm obsessed with them. They are so good. If you have not tried out H&M lipstick, go try it out. The formula will surprise you. It is very much the formula of a high-end lipstick. They got it right and you know, I have a drawer full of everything and I keep going for these. All right, we have another lip product that recently launched that I think is a fantastic formula. Also affordable, you'll find this at Target. Gosh, I have two Pixi products in my favorites this month. These are so good. This is the Matte Last Liquid Lip. The shade that I've been wearing the most is called Evening Rose. Isn't that pretty? It's just like so stunning and gorgeous and they dry down matte, they don't crack off, they're not overly drying, they're not overly putty where it kind of like smacks together and sticks, but they have like some kind of comfortable quality about them. I really, really am impressed by the quality of these. I'm also impressed by the colors, but all the shades are like these beautiful, neutral, gorgeous, wearable shades, which sometimes with liquid lips, you just find that they have all of these like crazy bright shades, which there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you just want like a flattering matte, wearable everyday kind of a rosy pink or neutral nude. And these have a nice diamond tipped doe foot applicator. So it's really easy to get a nice line. 
Look at that, are you not so impressed? I'm so impressed with these. This is pastel petal right there. And then we have Aw Naturel. Dude, these are so good. Expensive for Target, like this is a little bit up there in price. If you're looking at, you know, Wet n Wild and then you're going, Pixie, why are you a little bit up there in price? It is worth it because the quality is just so gosh darn good. You know, I try a lot of their new launches and this is one that I'm like, wow, where have you been? And because more is more, why not talk about one more lip item? I have this from Pure and this is the shade DIY. I don't know what is in here. It's like magic in a jar and I'm actually afraid of running out of it because it's so good. I love topping any lip look with this in the center. It's shiny, but it's also opaque at the same time, but kind of meshes with whatever else you're using and gives you just such a nice, plumpy, shiny, gorgeous lip look, and I love it. So let me put on more lipstick, why not? So there is color in there. You can't really see when you're wearing a neutral look like I am right now, but it just does something extra that I like, and it's such a pretty, just pretty soft pink. It's perfect. I love this so, so much. Another kind of eh product that I was gonna save for like a luxury regrets, but why not just tell you guys right now that this is god awful. This is from Givenchy. It's the weirdest sponge ever and it's expensive. I don't even know what to make of this, but I've used it once and I didn't even really get much done because this tip was just annoying the crap out of me. And then I was like, where's my beauty blender? I don't like this. Everybody tries to copy this guy right here and it just really can't be done. The closest copy that I liked was the Eco Tools one that has like a flat tip. Like that's cool for getting underneath the eye, but like, no, I just don't like this. Okay, we're gonna leave on a high note. A lot of you guys wanted to know about this cuff the last time I wore it in a video. And I picked this up, it's called Uno de 50. I had never been in the shop before and James and I were recently in Palm Springs. We love going there for our little getaways to kind of just shut down the social and just really unplug and spend time together. I love whenever I take trips, be it like a small piece of jewelry or a giant cuff like this, like it doesn't have to be an expensive thing, but I love picking up something that I can remember a trip by. I'm not a person that buys like, tchotchke kind of things, but I love memories attached to jewelry. It's kind of a thing with me. So this I picked up and I am so obsessed with it. I love cuffs like this that you can really wear forever and ever and ever. And the leather on here is only gonna get more worn and even better over time. So this is fantastic. And I thought it was such a cool store and apparently they have more of them. I'm not really familiar with the brand, but a lot of you guys wanted to know. So there you have it. All right. August faves and hates. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Let me know that you want more of these. Again, I kind of teeter on the like, should I, shouldn't I with faves and hates because um, they haven't been as popular as they once were, but let me know in the comments. Let me know by liking the video and yeah, that's that. I hope you're having a good one. I will see you guys all in my next video. Thanks for watching. Mwah.